ba 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 bran ba 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 bra oh hey sorry thought i was working on another podcast uh howdy episode 12 heart of markness podcast welcome three in a row every week i'm trying to stick to it that's why i'm uh sticking to the these shorter more digestible easier podcasts in which we just uh listen to a, sh- uh, a number or two from either a specific tour or a specific show that means a lot to me or has some sort of significance that I think you'll like. Um, in any case, this is the third in a row, and I'm proud of that. I'm going to keep going because I realize I love doing this, and I've been getting some really positive feedback from uh, people I've never met, and that is uh, heartwarming, and it's it's nice to feel connected and, you know, I'm going to keep doing this because I think there's a place for it. People like music, and this is cool music that, you know, it's it's not hard to get and hard to find, but if you're not familiar with bootlegs and live recordings and and that kind of thing, this would just pass you by, or you'd be stuck listening to, you know, YouTube things, which are totally fine. You can find a ton of great Zeppelin on YouTube, but, um, you know, here's a way to, to kind of have something curated and presented to you. I'm kind of your auditory sommelier for things Led Zeppelin. And uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. So episode 12 is going to be about the uh, April 27th, 1969 show at the Fillmore West. And specifically, the first couple of tracks from the first set of that show. They did two sets that night, and they did some crazy cool shit in the second set. But um, one of the songs I'm going to play tonight is a million years long, and I don't want to have two enormously long songs in one podcast. So I've got one short one, which is not on an album, and one long one, which is not on an album. So it's cool, it's neat, and it's refreshing to hear the uh, fine young... Led Zeppelin still tearing out of the gate and just tearing across America, making a name for themselves. And at this point in late April, um, they do have a name for themselves. They are known. They are famous. Um, they, Led Zeppelin one is has been out and it's, it's it's killing. And their word of mouth on their live concerts has spread. And you know everybody cool and hip knows that Zeppelin is a band you have to see. And at this point, you could go still go see them in nightclubs. The Fillmore is just a club like you probably have in your town with you know a few hundred people tops, which is fucking crazy. You can hear Robert talking at conversation level to members of the audience, and the microphones actually pick up the audience talking back. It's that small and that intimate still, and it's at the Fillmore West, which is one of those legendary venues, along with the Fillmore East and you know the Matrix and things like that, um, Whiskey A Go Go that are just legendary venues, and um, for good reason. This is San Francisco, and home of the Grateful Dead, and Jefferson Airplane, and the softer, hippy-dippy man, psychedelic stuff, which, imagine those peace-loving hippies, high as fuck on acid, getting their faces blown off by Led Zeppelin. It must have been, it must have been wild. I mean, everybody loved it. Everybody loved it. It was really cool. So uh, you'll get to experience that. You'll get to hear Zeppelin at the end of the uh, Telecaster era. These are among the last shows that Jimmy plays his Dragon Telecaster for because he now has the Les Paul that he bought from Joe Walsh. I think he even bought it that month in April of 69, but I'm not sure. And when the next tour kicks off, Jimmy's going to be playing his Les Paul. And um, it's going to be a whole new Zeppelin. They're going to be, you know, one notch tighter and they're going to have more songs under their belt and they're going to start recording Zeppelin 2. And right now is, you can still hear the wildness. Bonzo's still a little wild. Robert Plant's voice is insanely powerful, but still a little bit uh, all over the road. You know, he's not a master of it yet. They're not locked in tight yet. I mean, they're locked in tight. They're an incredible band. But they're not unbelievable yet. The power is there. The fury is there. They're young. They're 
just out to prove themselves and they're doing it. They've gone from being, you know, first opening act to second opening act to headliner in in four months when they hit the road you know when they played the Fillmore in January they were raw I believe they were opening for like Iron Butterfly or Vanilla Fudge or The Doors or something like that and now they are the headliner they're they're right up there they're peers with those bands and in just a matter of months they're going to be vastly superior to them and just be headlining coliseums and 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 stadiums in a year's time it's crazy and it, it's interesting to hear the contrast between the sound of this band in april of 69 compared to the sound of this band in march of 70 like we listened to last week with that how many more times it's remarkable how much they evolved and how much they grew together uh, to make something, un- I mean, unbelievable. Had they just stayed the 1969 Led Zeppelin, they would still be things of legend. But they just kept growing for a very long time. And uh, it's interesting in that you can hear this these songs I'm going to play, and you can tell it's the 60s. It's the 60s. It's not 1970, 71, 72. It's staunchly, solidly the 60s. And then just a few months later, you listen to the the uh, the how many more times that we played last week from Montro in 1970, and it is staunchly, solidly the 70s. You can tell, just something intangible. It's really interesting to me, and it's it was evident when I listened to these songs. You know, the 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 stark contrast in in energy and vibe and um, polarity, maybe is the word but uh in any case i'm I'm meandering so let's listen to the opening number of the first set from april 27th 1969 these recordings are excellent they're legendary they're absolutely not rare this is what you know in the top five or definitely top 10 must-haves for any zep fan you know and anybody's list it and excellent recording it's a matrix which means someone took the excellent audience recording and the excellent soundboard recording and just layered them together in a program like i'm using right now matched it up with skill and patience to make something that's richer and fuller and at times it can sound a little weird at the beginning of train kept a rolling you'll hear bonzo's cymbals kind of cutting in and out on the extreme left and right Uh, whereas the sound in the center stays the same. That's, I think, part of that uh, effect of having those two two, um, sources layered on top of each other. Um, I think it's a net win, and the quality of of this recording is amazing. The the clarity with which you're hearing things is just out of this world, and um, for most of it, it it could be a professional recording, and you wouldn't know. If you heard this on the radio, you wouldn't go, Jesus, this is a bootleg. So it really is a treasure, and all right, I'm meandering again. Train kept a rolling. Led Zeppelin, Fillmore. I hope you like it. See you in a couple minutes. Good evening. Uh, last night tonight, let's see. <laughs>
pretty awesome i really liked it i hope you did too short and sweet and powerful they were you know it's a great way to open a show and they did it again in 1980 you know trying to harken back to that day with mixed success but in this case it's obviously you know something really cool and powerful and it's not an it's not on any official zeppelin album so you know i love hearing them play songs that are new and that are covers or just songs they never you know recorded professionally i think it's a treat hope you liked it too let's zoom through to uh, the next track which is a longer track it's uh, called it's, it's a garnet mims song called as long as i have you and the opening lyrics to it are i was born in darkness i fought my way out of the blue cool stuff the original it does not have the psychedelic punch that this one has. And when you listen to it, you will know it's like it's truly psychedelic. It's truly 60s, especially with that Telecaster sound. There's also, in true Led Zeppelin style, you know, a million uh, medleys, songs in the medley. You know, they, they throw a bunch in when they're fucking around like this. And among them are... Uh, Fresh Garbage, the Spirit song, and yes, Spirit is the band that's suing Led Zeppelin, saying that Zeppelin, or Jimmy, uh, stole the opening stairway uh, arpeggios from one of their songs. Whatever. Uh, they also they do Fresh Garbage in this song, so there you go, it's going to be fun. They do um, a million blues songs, uh, Cadillac, No Money Down, and... Uh, Where's the cat squirrel shake fresh garbage as we know? Uh, I'm a man. Good stuff. It is a trip. I don't know of any other song Zeppelin played or any other t period of time in which Zeppelin played where they sounded like this. It's really, really good. It's raw. It's very raw. They're a young band. And they are just fucking killing it. So um, I don't know what else to say. It's loud. It's cacophonous. The quality is excellent. And you will hear a fiery, young, rampaging Led Zeppelin trying to climb to the top of the mountain and making really great progress doing it. As long as I have you, Heart of Markness, April 27th, 1969. See you in a few minutes.
darkness I fought my way out of the blue yeah, yeah. I had to learn to stand up And even when they scared me out of, out of my shoe huh? I'll never tell you, girl That you ain't never seen a nothing yet Just not a thing in this world That I can never get us Long as I live
Be mine. 
I'm gonna love you, baby, for about an hour's time. Cause I'm a man, spelled M, spelled A, spelled N. Yes, I'm a man, oh, I'm a man. Motivating back in town. I saw a Cadillac sign saying, No money down. So I eased my brakes and I pulled in my phone. I've got to have that car. I'm about riding down the road. Let me say it again. Let me tell you again. When I was a little boy, I'm not but five years old. And my mother told me, son, well, you got a lot of loving in the fold. Cause you're gonna be a man. Are you gonna be a man? Are you gonna be a you gonna be 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 a man? I can't 
try to think of the one that I can never, never get a, a love of the heaven. pretty wild it's uh not what one would expect to hear and it, you know oh turn your volume up i should have mentioned um i didn't realize it until i was playing it back how amazingly loud that show is um it clips at times i think there's a little bit of distortion i think the distortion is on the tape itself from it just being recorded at a hot level um i don't want to fuck with it because anytime I screw with it, because I'm not great with Audacity, the program I'm, that I'm using, and the plugins, um, it can sound really heavily processed and take away from the experience. So I trust all of you folks to be able to work the volume up and down as such. I do apologize for anyone in headphones who were like, yikes, when that song kicked in. Um, I'm going to work on that, but until I can actually do it in a way that doesn't suck um, I'm just going to kind of leave it native as is. So um, there you go. Hungry Young Zeppelin um, at its peak. And the end of the Telecaster era, the end of the end of playing clubs in, in many ways. Although they would play when they when they came back to America in the next month and play, you know, the Boston Tea Party and stuff. Um, but they have better equipment They'll have leveled up in that way. Jimmy will have his Les Paul, and they will sound a lot more like Led Zeppelin. This was pretty neat. I hope you liked it. Um, it took me a long time. It took me decades to like that song, as long as I have you. Um, it was loud. It was cacophonous. It really didn't do it for me. Robert's voice is, is ugh. Um, but um, I love it now. I listened to it last night and was just holy mackerel. And it's, it's, it's an important document and an important little milestone for the band. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It's been about 35 minutes now, so I'm going to sign off. And I'll be back next week with a better recorded podcast. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I promise you that it will be the best I can do. So... If you want to follow me on Twitter, follow me at Heart of Markness. I would love to hear from you. I have a website, heartofmarkness.com, where I will post this, and you can see a picture of the show. And there, uh, I'll also put up a link to download the entire show if you want, because it is one. Like I said, it is it is a must-have show of theirs, and it's completely uh, emblematic of that period of time. And you're not going to get a much better recording from that time period, although there are one or two others. And, uh, yeah, heartofmarkness.com, Twitter, Heart of Markness. I have a Facebook group called what? The Knitting Needle. No, Heart of Markness. So join that. This stuff's starting to become more active now. I'm putting energy into it, so 
you know, there is content on Twitter. There's tons of Zeppelin pictures. There's tons of Zeppelin stuff. And, uh, you know, you get to talk to me. Facebook, ditto. Same thing. Pop in. There are other people who listen to this podcast. There are people who listen to this podcast, which is knocking futz. That's just crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled and delighted. Um, so, yeah, plug in. Touch base. I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment on the blog, on Twitter, whatever. Um, thank you very, very much for listening, and I'll be back next week with more Zeppelin. Thanks, and enjoy. <laughs>